All right, thanks a lot, Jörn, and uh, welcome from my side also um, for these um, morning sessions here. Um, I'll explain to you shortly what's going to happen in the next 40 plus minutes, and I'll give you also the structure of it. Uh, but basically, I guess you already seen it. There's an empty page. There's five or six uh, scribbled notes. After 40 minutes, that will be full of them. This will be an analog experience. So try to hang on, lean back, and try to follow what's going on. I'll just first explain a little bit why do I talk the way I do. I mean, Jan Kajka read the thing in the web page, but I'm a classically trained Aristotelian philosopher. And for better or worse, I carry that weight with me the whole time. So I come from the so-called academia, and I'm still part of that. Uh, and I'm kind of like an active writer and researcher. And that's kind of like the position that I speak from. And I speak from the position of being able to both witness and to participate in various programs of artistic research, especially in Finland and then in Sweden. Uh, most strongly acting as a supervisor, hand letter for many uh, artists, uh, mostly from visual arts, but also from architecture, uh, dance, and uh, even fashion. Uh, just to give you a kind of like hint, what that kind of like research that I do, not on my own, but as a, as a kind of like a, again linking to that past, is that uh, we just finished a three-year project which is called Modernity Retired and it was a collaboration with the Staffan Schmidt class uh, Grinnell Wetenskapsrådet's uh, big money went into revisiting the experiences of those who were already active in their field of urban planning and architecture in the end of the 50s uh, and this is the kind of like second generation of Bauhaus legacy narrative interviews of linking 2012-13 to 1957, 1958 in the cities of uh, Tel Aviv, Chicago, Berlin and then also Istanbul and then we changed to Helsinki and to Stockholm. So that's a kind of like the uh, one of those uh, backgrounds what I've been doing and then also what I've been doing quite a lot is writing about identity especially the uh, complex issue of Finnish identity. But I'll kind of like uh, get into this. Um, uh, that ain't no laughing matter if you get into it, right? But I'll kind of like uh, just give you the, so this is what it's about. I'll give you a certain background of the thing, then I'll write down the two mottos. Jörn already touched upon one of them. Um, then I'll give you kind of like a uh, two different approaches, uh, going back to the roots, going there and doing with practice and then we go to C. Wright Mills and social imagination. And after that I'll kind of like uh, try to give you certain based on my very clear private, not private, but personal experiences in and through the institutions as a head of them, but as a researcher myself, uh, and asking, like, you know, artistic research as a big thing. So the question is then, so what is it good for? Another, not necessarily a laughing matter, right? But <coughs> this, um, the question here is then, because kind of like, uh, I won't, within these 40 minutes, you will see no pictures. As I said, it will be an analog experience. There's no examples of practices doing or uh, trying to do this. I won't talk about methods in itself either, but I'm kind of like talking about the context. Uh, you can call it the meta level also, kind of like, you know, where does it come from? Uh, and the also, uh, what do we win when we are 
kind of like before we start to run, not only kind of like deciding where to, towards where we're supposed to be running with, but what's the bag that we carry with us from before we even start going on. So what are the kind of like uh, presuppositions or the conditions of conditions of doing situated, committed, long-term research within it, within a kind of like a given field? Uh, and the field in itself is not important, but it's, it's again like what all this kind of like comes back to this, not necessarily that interesting what we do, but how do we do these things that we do when we do what we do as situated, committed and long-term acts within a context. And in this kind of context, you kind of come across this, uh, kind of going back to the uh, very ethics of qualitative, qualitative research as in history of last 150 years. And what the legacy of that, when it's understood as something pluralistic and open-ended activity, what that helps and carries with it is that, because uh, there is that certain kind of like a wish that there would be a kind of like world that would be one, as in that would be a kind of like one way of doing, one truth, one way of method. So we don't want that. We go somewhere else because the reality takes us there. The reality takes us to that, that there is then always many. Many things, many ways, many, many kind of like the different in themselves conflicting ways of articulation of a certain content of a concept, articulation of a certain uh, context. So what it is always also means as that's the thing that you know what this is kind of like uh, uh, whispering into your ear. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a false security, and this means that okay, then we are in a mess. But it's our mess, right? And then the question is like, so not what, but how? How do you then survive at it, with it, in and through it? And then it comes to this kind of thing that, you know, there's no way out of that as an individual trying to do whatever you do when you do what you do. That you have that freedom in it, and then you have that responsibility with it. So you have that both and of freedom and responsibility. And you have that thing in there as in kind of like trying to figure out that constant give and take of where are you from, where are you right now, and where are you going. As in that these all interact and also not determine, but they inform strongly what's possible, what's pos potential, how can we do the best out of the situation, the site, the conditions of conditions where we are. And this is then, kind of like comes to this uh, question of that, uh, this X is then something, there has to be an interpretation that is located within its own field, within its own medium, within its own, kind of like both biographical and then the past and the present and the future possibilities of that certain way, that medium of expression. And that's an interpretation that then has to be located, has to be committed, and I've been saying situated, and it has to be there again, live and kicking. So it is then, if and when the kind of background is there, it gives a chance of that, that it can come to this, that there's a certain kind of like a giving a content to a concept as in an articulation an actualization of a continuity. Whereas this kind of like a understanding of the past, present and the future of that thing. So this would be then that very background when I'm talking about. And this is then uh, kind of like uh, translated or transformed into two mottos uh, that luckily kind of like again, I am trying to activate and also dig deeper with these things, but these are absolutely not invented by me, but there's a long legacy of that, taking that chance and challenge seriously and trying to enjoy with it. 
And the, kind of like the chance challenge, challenge of it is kind of like, because uh, we're trying to do something that doesn't want to fall into this, that we would come out with certain safe haven of uh, false security of an answer instead of a kind of like ongoing process of keep on keeping on. So just like before the two mottos, just to kind of like, in a, I won't give you an image, but I'll give you a metaphor of this thing, kind of like uh, using this uh, or thinking how to describe this way of kind of like that you go somewhere where you haven't been yet, but you have the confidence of trying to do that and you don't care that much that you fall down, you get up. So it feels quite often that as if you are running through a field that is about this high of snow. So it's waist high snow and you have to run through it and you want to run through it. What it means is you fall down quite often. You get up, you get sweaty, you, f you get continue, you, you kind of like start enjoying that falling down and getting up. And there's no kind of like, uh, is there a little bit of kind of like a security for yourself, but there's somewhere where you want to go, but you never end up where actually you think you're going, you go somewhere else, and so on. But these mottos are then kind of like, uh, instead of uh, running waist deep in snow, it's called then democracy. of experiences. And the second one is then um, is then called, uh, methodological abundance. And I mean like Jan also already said uh, kind of like uh, this here is a performative lecture of trying to invite you to think with these chances, these possibilities. But if you want to read that kind of like uh, written articulation of these things that's then found in, for example, there in my web page, a uh, couple of those uh, books and articles uh, about this thing. Uh. So, um, but this kind of democracy of experience has come to this that because uh, even within the, kind of like the legacy or, or the, kind of like the traditions in plural of qualitative research, uh, there are competing and there has to be competing versions of the same they are similar but not the same, and there's competition of that. Uh, so there's a kind of like experience of who you are, where you're from, where you are, where you're going to. There's experiences of that kind of like uh, reality that escapes you and kind of like throws you off the uh, balance. Uh, but what this is then uh, really clearly highlighting and trying to take as serious as uh, po possible is that there's no hierarchy between these different experiences of the same or similar reality that is kind of like something that we feel worthwhile of staying with and getting closer. So there's no hierarchy, no a priori uh, kind of like set up that this or that way of, of kind of like categorizing it, analyzing it or experience it, it would be in itself better than something else. But the kind of like the understanding that these have to kind of like face one another because they learn in that way from one another of these different experiences, how they bounce, bounce off one another. And it's also that there has to be kind of like, you know, uh, criticism from all these different uh, experiences, I think kind of like participation in it. So it means also that there's a certain kind of like a sense of collective getting together and arguing about what we feel is important. And the arg arguing is then happening under this motto of a loving conflict. Not a consensus, but a loving caring conflict, that you are seriously committed to disagree in a fashion that is both responsible and uh, recognizing the other. So as you see, kind of like, you know, when you invite me, you get a big ugly guy talking about beautiful things, right? Or something like that. So it's also kind of like goes back to this, that what is this experience? Because it's not one, it's escaping, it kind of goes both over, goes under, and it ain't steady. Uh, the thing is that again, so it's like questions that cause like how do we produce knowledge in and through that experiences that is never the same but it's kind of like in, in a flux. So. And then kind of like that uh, how to generate sites and situations where you can get closer and share and listen to. So it's again that uh, kind of like we all know that there's enough of this talk, 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 but who are there to listen? It kind of like also goes back to this that there has to be like these situations where we are now, one of these kind of like ways of trying to move towards them. And this kind of like uh, moving towards this uh, methodolo methodological abundance, this goes uh, back to a kind of like a philosopher of science called 
Paul Fire Arben, who then in this uh, kind of like the 60s and 70s caused a big roar, kind of like saying that uh, anything goes. And he kind of like said it on purpose because he was kind of like provoking that there would be a complete utter relativism, which is the opposite of what he was uh, trying to say is that there is no in and to when we can like trying to get close to this. What does this mean? How can we kind of like, you know, what does it to mean to us? What does it mean to our colleagues? How to kind of like deal with that? How to find the conceptual tools of understanding or getting even closer to it so it's not just escaping and you don't run after it but you move towards it. Uh, that there's no a priori set of kind of like saying either here that what is that? Uh, kind of like, uh, what, what are those uh, conceptual tools? Uh, but uh, there's that kind of like, you know, uh, certain kind of like, uh, there's, you know, each time, each site, each kind of like, you know, uh, uh, situation, you have to figure out based on what kind of experience and what kind of context, uh, what is the adequate. Abundance means actually that, that you have to collect the, uh, well, you know, use your, your kind of like a vernacular adequate, right? So the question is that is like, what is that uh, kind of method that is adequate for that uh, certain, uh, certain thing? Uh, and then kind of like that, it has to be kind of like less than more. I and mean, basically it's oft often kind of like, you know, one after another, not two at the same time. Uh, something is kind of like a leading that thing and something is kind of like a following. Uh, so it's just kind of like a need and necessity to choose that. And that cho choosing of that structure and that direction then carries you, it helps you, it doesn't stand on your way, but it really kind of like helps you to figure out out of those kind of like variations of the experience, out of those kind of like motivations, out of those kind of like things that are happening with, with <coughs> and through that, which one, of, which one of those then are the, kind of like the ones that make sense and are uh, kind of like sensible to follow uh, after, and which are then kind of like, you know, uh, cases of uh, please do not torture us with your trivialities. Of course, thankfully, not all of our experiences are meaningful, not all of our, our kind of like ways of producing knowledge in and through artistic research in itself is that interesting. The question is then, which are which? So that's kind of like the background of the background, going to this kind of like Aristotelian. I mean, there's like certain, certain reason. This is of course also a provocation, kind of like, you know, let me be very kind of like pedagogical here. We give you the numbers. Uh, so there was this kind of like figure there throughout these years. Uh, let's put the old way of kind of like, you know, there like before Christ. Uh, so this is like then a uh, little less than 2,500 years ago. God damn, it's older than Catholic Church, huh? <laughs> so there's a certain legacy that we can go back to. It ain't giving you the answer, but it gives you one of those kind of like, you know, ways of dealing with that mess where you are, if and when you take it seriously, seriously <coughs> and if and when you do, don't take it that as it is already made, but it's always in that need, in that certain search of that, uh, kind of like a uh, time and space uh, uh, motivated, uh, uh, kind of like informed articulation and actualization. Because uh, what you get here is that uh, it's kind of like uh, two things, uh, kind of like the question of good life and the question of a good practice. And they're very closely to, related to this guy a long time ago saying that good life is spent looking for the good life. And then good practice is spent searching for the good practice. Now, for years and years, this is seen as a kind of like tautology, that's kind of like an empty circle. But that it's not. It's like the other way of asking is that whatever you do, the question is like, what do you do when you do what you do? Why do you do it? How do you do it? So what is the motivation that drives you? What is the motivation that drives you during the first five years? What, what's the motivation that drives you? Where's the hope in trying to do something better in whatever that you do after 20 years of doing that? And that's a, one of those kind of like so-called big questions. And there's kind of like what Aristotle gives us then certain guidance is that uh, uh, there's no 
answer to that by facing that site, facing that kind of like, you know, uh, demand. Uh, and that demand is then kind of like, you know, what that good is that, uh, you know, it's never just a technicality. And it's uh, never, never just a kind of like, um, uh, uh, certain kind of like uh, 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 ready-made. Uh, there's a certain kind of like uh, practice uh, that kind of like uh, uh, carries it, uh, but it has to be kind of like there's that, you know, the context of the site of it. Uh, it has to be kind of like, uh, uh, critical towards itself and its kind of like a past, present, and the future, and it has to be reflexive, and it has to be open-ended. Uh. So it has to be kind of like you know. Uh, has the ability to laugh at and with it itself. Uh, so it has to be that kind of like, uh, moving on. Uh, and it kind of like, uh, goes into this that uh, there's a certain kind of like uh, each practice, whatever that is, like the practice of playing professional ice hockey or the practice of kind of like uh, uh, being an architect, uh, they both have what is then called the kind of like internal logic and the criteria. The criteria then that kind of like, you know, al allows us, not the answer, but cl get closer to their kind of like, uh, the in intensity of that act of doing what you do when you do, and the integrity of it. And of course, this is kind of like, you know, loading the act of doing research, but it's also loading in a way that it should actually not stand on its way, but help it try to do what it wants to do. And there's this kind of like the, uh, this Aristotelian understanding of that you have goods as in the kind of like things that make that practice better or worse. And those are kind of like, uh, there's an internal as in the difference between, uh, you know, Y, Z and X. And then there are kind of like uh, the goods that are external, which are quite often the kind of like macro level uh, uh, conditions of conditions where, where we find, uh, as, as in the kind of like finances, uh, uh, <coughs> fame, and, and so on, something that kind of like, you know, also drives us. Uh. But the question here is then kind of like, you know, how to get closer to that, the internal, because the internal logic of how to do that thing a little bit better. And the certain thing is that uh, there's that idea that it has to be slow. And it has to kind of like learn how to move, not horizontally, but vertically. And this is kind of like, the, like uh, this is the uh, kind of like other way of saying is that uh, whatever we do, it's like, a, it's like difficult to put there. Let me go here. So like that this, this kind of like uh, trying to get closer to the internal goods and the internal logic of an, of an action shouldn't be done like this, but it has to be done so that you are throughout the process kind of like uh, not trying to map the whole Terran 360 degree uh, 24 7 illusion but you can like uh, go into there and decide and choose in and out and kind of like out of uh, at the beginning of uh, 55 questions at the end you have three out of which you can answer one and a half and that's it. And this is the kind of like the, the way into this uh, question of intensity and integrity of that action. Uh. And if this kind of like sounds a little too abstract and so on, there's always these kind of like helps that you get from other fields. And this is just a quote that I found when preparing for this uh, talk. This comes from Miles Davis. Some of you might remember him. Some of you might have even vinyls of him. I don't remember where, where this was uh, taken, but uh, there's a quote by Miles Davis that you have to play a long, long time to sound like yourself. Again, no laughing matter, huh? <laughs> but once said, in, or in its naivete, naivete in, no, in its kind of like, you know, easiness, we know that there's something in it. Uh, we know that, that your voice, your sound, what you want when you do what you do ain't there when you start it, but it, it grows, and if it's allowed to grow and it kind of takes risk and experience, it might get there somewhere, but it's gonna take a long, long time, right? And there's no kind of like uh, way out of that. Uh, so instead of kind of like running away from it, you should kind of like stay with it and stick with it and try to enjoy it. Too. 
So like, uh, going back to this question then of C. Riot Mills, again, let's be pedagogical. This is a uh, recent, uh, still uh, kind of like a recent uh, phenomenon of uh, American uh, political activist and, uh, and one of these kind of like pioneers of uh, participatory sociology, whose uh, small book from, I think it's then 1950, Eight, the first one called Social Imagination is then still one of those places where we can go for a certain kind of like a help of trying to understand what we do when we do what we do. And that's kind of like the, uh, what here is then again, the question is that kind of like, uh, it goes back to this that uh, whatever you do, you can kind of like escape from that thing that there's certain I that is doing it, uh, and the eye has a certain biography. The certain uh, kind of like the biography has certain kind of like sameness, and uh, certain chains. Uh, we are born somewhere. We don't have to stay there where we're born, but we can change that where we're born. We come from somewhere, and uh, kind of like dealing with that, the past, present, and the future of that of that thing. But at the same time, then we have. To kind of like, uh, we can call this the micro level of it, uh, to kind of like the micro level of it, uh, but then you have the macro level, and then you have the kind of like the history, you have the structures within which you try to operate, within which you wake up in every morning. And this is then that give and take that happens there. And this kind of like understanding of this uh, necessity of understanding whatever it is that you do here, if you want to do it in a kind of like situated, committed way that you kind of like have a, even the slightest chance of making a dent into that practice, into that reality, is only in and through, not necessarily always consciously, but both and consciously and unconsciously understanding that there has to be that kind of like a, a particular and the general, kind of like private, and then the common, and connecting these things. And where does it then come together? It's in that kind of like professional practice that you're trying to produce and trying to take further. And it's this kind of like understanding that uh, if you only focus on that, you lose the, under, lose the ways of how these are actually affecting you, whether you, whether you want or not. And at the same time, if you focus on that, you lose this part, which kind of like gives you the motivation of uh, kind of like, uh, why would you do it unless it is important for you? Which translates to the fact that whatever this is, that we know that the end result of this here, that unless this person here, uh, basically in the end, it's no clarification of it, but unless there's a certain extreme need of doing that. There's no other ways of kind of like doing that. There has to be a conviction that what I try to do is worthwhile. And if that conviction is not there, the end result of it is, is kind of like, you know, very, very difficult to understand. Why would anybody pay attention to that? And why would anybody take that seriously unless it's uh, already there? And here's the kind of like this <coughs> connecting the biography and the structures of it that comes into this kind of like, uh, understanding of um, what Mills was writing so uh, beautifully, and it's this kind of like act of changing perspectives. That you try to kind of like, you know, get out of your own zone and open it up and see how these things feel from the other way around. And then kind of like, it's also the other one, that you are connecting the dots out of those kind of like uh, openings and closures of what's kind of like uh, um, imagined to be possible, uh, what's the narration of that kind of like a certain uh, uh, practice, uh, what's kind of like uh, included, what's, what's, in, it's, it, what's included and so on. I think kind of like a creative thing of opening, of kind of like changing the perspective, opening up and then connecting the dots. And this is this kind of like idea of uh, where, uh, go back to this uh, freedom and responsibility, where you, where you also kind of like connect that specific of your personal experience to something of a kind of like a 
potentially uh, shared uh, more or less uh, general way of linking it. And out of that, then, in a perfect, when, when it kind of like functions, comes something specific, something unique, and even something singular. <coughs> so this is kind of like uh, this talking with, thinking with, and being with of uh, participatory research. Um, and um, this is then what uh, kind of like Mills there at the end of, uh, end of the 50s was writing about as uh, the act of being an intellectual craftsman. So it's again a practice and it has certain tools and it has certain kind of like preconditions that you have to be able to use until it, unless you kind of like can't do it at all. And kind of like uh, Mills, I suppose some of you know this also, but uh, it's difficult not to use that anecdote. Uh, he's the one also kind of like already then kind of like, uh, kind of like growing uh, more and more uh, worried about this certain way of one size fit all answers within academia and also the, the lack of, uh, kind of like, uh, ability to articulate clearly what you want to say and kind of like hiding behind, uh, uh, well, like big words like here. But Mill's kind of like a way of uh, criticizing academia already by then was that uh, kind of like talking about writing, writing with is that the problem is that if you want to get out of academic pose, you first have to get out of the academic, uh, no, no, the other way. Uh, if you want to get out of the academic prose, you have to get out of the academic pose. As in, please do not take yourself too seriously. This is goes back to Mills. I'm almost at the end. We are doing okay with time? Good. Uh, and now let me just find the last piece of uh, analog paper. Good. What is it good for, right? Being like saying that already is that uh, kind of like, uh, and it goes into this here that if and when research is, is research is that it of course has to start with this certain kind of like mapping the terrain, but sliding and adding just more and more of potentially interesting questions and kind of like topics in it won't do. That is not research, that's just collecting the data, collecting the kind of like uh, uh, possible doors to which you go in. It's only if and when you kind of like, kind of like find that way of doing this. And for that, uh, you can like uh, have that practice Whatever that practice is, again, it can be kind of like uh, 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 experimental, uh, performative activity, socially engaged practice. It can be kind of like constructive, constructivist painting. That in itself, it's not that interesting. It's a question of how that individual connected to other individuals within that field is trying to actualize that very practice. Uh, and this is then kind of like the. Um, like not wanting to uh, repeat myself is that it's again that you are then kind of like dealing not about something, but you are engaged, you are embedded, you are in and through, and it's also with. So all these kind of propositions in there, but it's not out of there, it's inside you, but it, because it is kind of like so important inside, you have to kind of like get near and get, uh, get away. I mean, there's more fanciful ways of saying that you have to kind of like uh, get the uh, proxy, you have to get kind of like, you know, uh, close, and then you have to, have to get distance. Uh, and it's that kind of like uh, give and take process of that that you're facing here, as we also know. And what this then kind of like as in terms of uh, what is it good for as in a kind of like institutionally arranged and structured continuity of a uh, ways of doing it that is helping it and helping it to survive and helping it to find a kind of like a live and kicking way of doing it day in, day out, is that it goes to this that kind of like uh, <coughs> what this kind of things is that we need to know the tools, the conceptual tools that we are, we are using, 
But this is kind of like, a, it's not then kind of like, a, it's not supposed to be doing theory light. But it's supposed to be reflection strong. As in participation of that act of producing that certain knowledge. So, and this is kind of like then going back to here, I'm almost at the end, is that uh, where, do you, where did I talk, write this uh, here, talk, talk, and then we are very good at talking but not very good at listening, is that, uh, that you find these ways of kind of like sharing and coming together and kind of like bounce on and off. Uh, so it's kind of like, uh, um, it's not that you are a shareholder, you don't own any of that, uh, but you have to have a stake. And you have to kind of like invest time and energy that it is something that you are burning for. And that's something that you care for. And you care for through, in and through kind of like uh, producing stuff in it, but then also kind of paying attention. And then not only this, but also kind of listening and kind of like, you know, letting that how others do same or similar stuff to affect the way that you try to do that. So this is kind of like then, in the end, kind of like uh, comes to this, that it's not another laughing matter. This ability to do what you do when you do just a little bit more better and meaningful way. You don't answer it, there's no kind of way of kind of like uh, ending it, but kind of like keep on keeping on and keeping that practice in a way that it kind of like uh, throws you back off the balance and, and, and kind of like, you know, motivates you to find the ways of finding the hope how to continue. So again, like, you know, big words, but unless there's this, what's the worth? Finishing off with somebody else's words is that, again, being kind of like saying that, and I hope that this way of kind of like big, ugly guy talking fast, writing incomprehensible ways here is invitation to laugh at me, laugh at this matter in order to take it seriously. And this is then in order to take it seriously, unless you take it seriously so that you have distance to it, and unless it kind of like gives you, that it feeds the tree, unless it gives you the pleasure of doing it, there's something wrong. You're producing for the sake of production, and then it kind of like it ends in a kind of like sad corner in the end, but there has to be pleasure in it. It's not hedonistic, it's not heroic pleasure, it's something of a kind of like a being in the world of trying to understand how do you deal with this mess that you are, anyhow. So, in the words of Susan Sontag, again mixing the bag, it's her writing and reflection with a guy called Roland Barthes. This is from her writings in 1982, and she's basically from another angle and with a different vocabulary, kind of like dealing with these things and kind of like try to understand and how, kind of like explaining how Bart helps her to keep on keeping on. And here's that uh, quote that I then also finish. This is Susan Sontag, 1982. The point is not to teach us something particular. The point is to make us bold, agile, subtle, intelligent, detached, and to give pleasure. Thank you. There's a hierarchy in institutions, I think, kind of like, uh, uh, of course, there's a kind of like, you know, who has more experience, who is a teacher, who is a, who's a kind of like a uh, student and so on. But in terms of kind of like trying to deal with our experiences of being in the world, I don't think if we can like allow the hierarchy in there, then we can like fall down into these kind of like false, false securities. Uh, and it's that kind of like, a, 
this is not to say that it's easy, it's very difficult because of course like we come through and we learn that which parts of these are kind of like more convincing and so on. So we are kind of like, a, there's a certain kind of like a past that guides us and needs to guide us also and it's also kind of like, it's, a, it's kind of like very strong prejudice there as in a kind of like personal way of dealing what it is. Uh, but it's this kind of like uh, in order to take it seriously is that, that you at least try to be open for that. Uh, yeah, it's as a motto, yeah. And that kind of like, again, it's, it's very good that uh, you just brought this up, because this is again like neither this, that anything goes, that kind of like everything is kind of like in itself good. It's not, that's just, you know, ridiculous. Uh, but it means that it's, you have to kind of like choose uh, and try to kind of like move, move towards it. Uh, and then you have to kind of like deal with that uh, plurality. And it's only way of kind of like uh, in and through that practical based uh, kind of like uh, uh, actualizations and articulations that you try to get co closer to this. Otherwise it becomes a, a, a form and formalistic. Awesome. Uh, thank you for your talk. Um, I, I, I hope I follow the gist of it, but it's quite a lot to follow there. You want some more? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> enough for the time being, thank you. But I was really interested in two points that you raised. One was the Aristotle yeah. Which for me brings together the idea of reflexive, reflective and ethical issues into, into one state. We'll, we'll ignore good life for the time being. I think that kind of brings up a question which faces many of us practitioners, which is how do we deal with this conflict of rigor in the creative act? Yeah. And one, from what you've laid out, you seem to have kind of left out the medieval tradition of uh, bringing together adversarial as opposed to inquisitorial uh -huh. approach to knowledge. <laughs> and you talked about loving, loving conflict, which seems... Uh, so could you say a little bit yeah. more about that and tell us a little bit more about what you mean by that? Sure. It's kind of like... Uh, um, yeah, but it's like, um, it goes back to these things that uh, kind of like... Uh, uh, I mean, this is again like, uh, I mean, this is ethics, so this is a certain belief system uh, that uh, like, uh, has a certain internal logic of it, and I, I believe in this. Uh, it doesn't close out other ways of kind of like approaching uh, the way, but uh, the, kind of like the, this Aristotelian way of kind of like, uh, uh, as we know, I mean, we don't need to use Aristotelian, we can go back to the good old soul song, body, soul, and mind, the triangle, tri uh, the kind of like the tri uh, the three points of that, that unless you have them all, this kind of like good life is not possible and there has to be certain kind of like a balance. Uh, this looks like an uh, ugly man, but kind of like, you know, body, soul and mind. And again, like you know, how to rescue, uh, rescue this from this kind of like uh, God awful, uh, kind of like uh, uh, you pay for two and get three answers uh, as in uh, living a good life. Uh, I mean, this is everything but. Uh, this is kind of like really trying to understand that, God damn, this is difficult. Uh, but it's kind of like the, uh, trying to understand that this, this rigorousness and this kind of like, the, the kind of like you know, how to balance these things is, uh, is kind of like uh, that. Uh, you can't have a good practice without having a kind of like certain uh, kind of like ability to li live, a, live a good life and to respect yourself and the other ones around you. This is hard talk. This is kind of like, you know, uh, really, you know, preposterous. But, I mean, uh, I certainly believe in it. Uh, you know, do I succeed in it? Hell no. I mean, of course you don't. Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't, don't go, go, try going to it. Uh, and that kind of like this uh, certain kind of like uh, ethics of being in the world as in kind of like this uh, that you kind of like go back to this uh, this is a uh, concept from there's a German ex existentialist called uh, Karl Jaspers uh, not very well known but uh, kind of like uh, oops Oy. <coughs> that was an extra dramatic there um, goes back to this kind of like, uh, 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 kind of like uh, uh, existentialism of, of uh, uh, not of Sartre but of, uh, of Albert Camus and it's this kind of like that uh, because we know that there's this plurality and there's that conflicts of interest and motivations and needs and desires, uh, fears within yourself and then within your surroundings. Uh, and that's you kind of like the best, instead of kind of like, you know, reaching a consensus, 
uh, reaching a certain kind of like, uh, uh, clearly kind of like, uh, agreement uh, is then that you have this kind of like, uh, loving conflict that you respect the other of kind of like, uh, uh, like it's not it's more than tolerance also that you kind of like uh, care to kind of get into this but I mean this is of course a kind of like you know situation that uh, uh, you know goes back to this that uh, it, you know entails that there's not supposed to be a violence and there's this kind of like you know the ability to listen but I mean as ever ethics is basically just making things more complicated uh, and so but I mean, um, just to finish off, I mean, the other way of uh, describing this uh, is that you have a reasonable disagreement. And none of that is possible if there's a kind of like a, a structural or a direct violence in question. So hope that kind of like, uh, gives something more food to thought. Uh, yeah. Sure, sure. Cause like you know, uh, that's if anything is that kind of like you know, uh, which uh, you know, uh, I kind of like. Um, thanks for bringing that up because of course it's a problem that I throw this in here too often without kind of like saying it. Uh, but all I can now say that you know, in each case, this we should be uh, articulated and not taken for granted. Uh, because that definitely always uh, kind of like you know something is excluded and something is I included. Uh, who gets a chance? Who has the kind of like cap capability, time and energy, money to take part in these uh, things? Uh, who is thrown out uh, for one one reason or another, and so on? Uh, those are clearly existing issues. Uh, kind of like uh, so it's uh, so kind of like uh, the problem here is that I'm taking it a little too granted and jumping into that that we already in that circle, but you are there. So that's a, like you know different opening up that what happens that uh, kind of like you know how is this kind of like a thing happening, but this uh, kind of like uh, what do you take from uh, home from this? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, kind of like you know uh, you can try this at home, uh, uh, but it's like you know the practice kind of like what I'm trying to say is that uh, again, kind of legacy of critical hermeneutics connected to this guy here is that. This is not new. Within the artistic research, it's not new either anymore, but it's like 20 plus years. So, but that 20 plus years connects to that 100 plus minus of qualitative research. So, so there's different ways of that past, present, and the kind of past, then past, now, past, and the future that we should connect to. And it's the responsibility and the freedom of the one who is doing that practice, not only as a researcher, but in order that you find the ways of doing what you do in a little bit that gives you, feeds you a little more. And that, that you're not alone, but you're connected anyhow, but that you kind of like do those connecting the dots actively. 
and not kind of just uh, floating around, but you're trying to these uh, phase ways of doing this. Uh, so this is kind of like saying that, it's also saying that uh, quite often in this train of thought, which is not the only train of thought, is that it's already in there, but as the, that quote of uh, Foucault is that, but what's in there? You le left out there, that ain't the answer, it's just the beginning of the beginning, and then you face it. So what do I want? Why and with whom? To whom do, do you do it? And that kind of, you know, this opens up these here is that, you know, to whom do you do it? Who is this kind of, like, you know, this thing uh, and so on. So it's kind of like, uh, in the end, uh, if there's something to get out of this is that, you know, we are always kind of like closer in it, especially in that we, as in the kind of like, uh, as, as far as I understood that uh, you all in the audience are uh, kind of like, uh, uh, professional uh, teachers and educators and artists. Uh, so there's a certain kind of like uh, 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 framing in there, and that uh, kind of like uh, that, that there is that certain practice that you come from, where you at, and where you take it further. But it's also to say that uh, I do believe that there's more in there when you stay closer to it. But that close to staying closely hurts, and again, like. On that purpose is that uh, kind of like, but it's partly because I mean I'm not a native speaker and I, kind of like I try to articulate this in English as best as possible. So it's also on purpose that I flirt with this kind of like, uh, no, not flirting, but you know I think it's also well. Okay, now one more thing is that I think it's really important to kind of like you know not to be afraid of the big words, but also to find the courage to face the things that are impossible. And that's ethics, uh, kind of like the. And then you can like you know laugh at it in a kind of good way or a wrong way, but I mean it's like the um, in the kind of like conditions of conditions where we are kind of like force-fed with uh, kind of like endless flow, the tsunami of information of the lie of being 24/7, 360 degrees, 365 days uh, of kind of like sliding this way. Uh, what if we can like uh, steal it back and start talking about the kind of like the things that are here? And I actually kind of slapping you at the face. Sure, sure. No, but that's again like, uh, you know, <coughs> definitely the, a very good and uh, central I issue here. But it's like, again, as is obvious in this way of kind of like, uh, uh, you know, throwing 25 balls up in the air and being able to catch one, catch one or two of them, is that uh, I go there also too fast, is that, well, it's like, the, if you take that, what you brought up, there's like, you know, perception and it's that it's also kind of like premeditated and it's also cultural and it's also kind of like very clearly kind of like uh, through our past and experiences, we are kind of like uh, already structured of uh, paying attention to something and something not. Uh, so there's that kind of like, the, kind of like the trying to avoid hierarchies as in that kind of like uh, personal thing, as in kind of like keeping an open mind. But in, in the end, what this here, in fact, is actually trying to say more of that, that if and when we have that one reality and we have, let's say, conflicting perceptions of that, what that thing was, that was happening, that we would not first go there and say, this is wrong and this is wrong because I am right. But you can like, try to kind of like, see that why are they seeing in this? And this kind of like change of the perspective in it, that what in that sense of kind of like uh, trying to do that certain painting in one way, what if the other one's way of doing it, it, it has kind of like something that allows this one to do something, but it kind of like opens you up also, kind of like feeds back to your practice. 
So this is this kind of like a way of uh, believing that uh, opening up through this and also kind of like letting that challenge to be there. Does this help? Little? Yeah, it's, it's, it's as much about being aware about your actual mechanisms okay. and heartbeat sure. as to not have a heartbeat in a way. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, that, 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 that is clearly the, like, uh, again this uh, kind of like, uh, the, uh, this uh, pre-understanding that we have of, of, of everything. It would be really idiotic to deny it. it it's there, but you have to deal with it uh, and so on. But it's, it's kind of like, you know, in terms of, uh, again, like this uh, kind of like certain question of uh, research is that we know in contemporary world is that we have experience of kind of like uh, uh, unemployment, uh, we know that it's overruled by the certain version of uh, uh, economics. It's not economics in itself, it's certain version of economics that says, you know, shut up, it's about the economy and the rest of that thing is that, you know, you know, irrelevant, right? So this is basically just saying that at the same time, through the numbers are there, but at the same time there's something that, and also that there's, that there's you know, how you have this like reality here and that you have this, diff, let's say, three different takes one, two, and three is to also that, you know, this interaction here, but that there's something that is not uh, translatable from one experience to another and that you have to respect that. Right? This just came to my mind through this kind of, uh, you know, rather naive example of the e economics. Uh, you can't deny their version of the reality, but you should not kind of like allow your experience of a certain kind of like a, it's not metaphysical or mythical, but it's kind of personal experience of uh, being in the world to be reduced into those numbers. They coexist. As you see, as you see, I, I, can, I could go on for a little while. But it's super interesting that you have actually breached the, the practice with, with the ethics, and I think we can go on discussing that after, after when, when, when they have the Uh, thank you.